Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, then welcome. I'm happy to have you here. My name is Coral. I'm a rising senior and I'm a pre-med student sharing my journey with you guys. Last week I posted my first MCAT video, which is how I studied for the MCAT and I included all of the resources I used and my study schedule and what I wish I did. Um, that I wasn't able to get to in my time studying. So if you're interested in seeing my MCAT journey, you can go watch that video here. I'll link it up here in the information bar and down below in the description box. Um, so for this video, what I want to do is just go some more general tips. Um, courses that you'll want to take before studying for the MCAT as well as some non not required courses, but recommended ones based on my experience. I'm going to talk about tips that I have for each of the four sections of the MCAT. Lastly, I'm going to talk about some test day preparation tips and some more general tips that I have. If you watched my last video, I filmed that actually a couple months ago, so um, I look a little bit different. I cut my hair and dyed it actually yesterday, so um, if I look a little bit different, that's why. First, I'm going to talk about your coursework before you start studying for the MCAT. The first thing I want to say is you could take all of the courses in the world that could ever prepare you for the MCAT, but if you don't put the work into them while you're taking them to understand the material and get it into your long-term memory, then it's not going to do you any good. So the first thing I would say is just a general tip of in your classes throughout your undergrad, you should be studying thoroughly and engaging in the material in an active way to get it into your long-term memory because that'll make studying the content for the MCAT a lot less painful. That's what I did in my classes. I would take notes in class by hand with a pen and a pencil, uh, annotating the PowerPoint slides, and then I would go home that day, or if I didn't have time, I would sometimes end up doing it in the week before the test, but I would um, type out the notes on my computer in Google Docs, and then I would print that off, and I would um, highlight it and annotate it even more. Sometimes I would even make a summary sheet on a plain piece of paper from there. Um, so just any way you can engage with the material in different ways is going to help you understand it and help it get into your long-term memory. I will say that I have since switched to digital note-taking so that I can save all that paper I was using. It was starting to get ridiculous, so um, I've started taking notes on my iPad. I can download a PDF of the PowerPoint slides, annotate them in a notes app, then I can type it up on my computer in Google Docs, export that as a PDF into my iPad, and um, annotate it from there. And I can also get plain sheets of paper in my notes app and make those summary sheets. So as for courses that I would highly recommend that you take are the ones that the AMC recommends, which are biology, biochemistry, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, psychology, and sociology. So seven courses in total. Um, these are just the basic sciences that you're gonna need to have an understanding of for the MCAT. Um, I would go even further to recommend some upper level courses. Um, I didn't take the MCAT until I was in the spring of my junior year. And I think that really helped me having that deeper understanding of the material. Um, I took anatomy and physiology throughout my junior year. And I think that was really helpful for the MCAT because the biology section of the MCAT is focused on humans and human physiology and molecular pathways within humans because you're trying to go to medical school um, to help humans. I thought that was really helpful. I would highly recommend taking an anatomy and physiology course before you start studying for the MCAT or even while you're studying. I found a lot of overlap and a lot of connections being made because I was studying for the MCAT while taking these classes. Next, I would recommend that you take some upper level psychology courses. I'm a psychology minor and um, with that minor comes taking some upper level psychology courses. I took lifespan developmental psychology and health psychology before I took the MCAT and um, these were really helpful just keeping my brain refreshed of all the different psychological terms and that way of thought because it's a lot different than the way you think and reason through hard science material. I would highly recommend that you take abnormal psychology before the MCAT because a lot of the questions are focused around psychological disease so I would recommend that you take um, abnormal psychology so that you can straighten out all these different terms for the different diseases in your head um, because I didn't take that and I hadn't taken general psychology where I learned about those disorders since high school and I found that to be um, really difficult to memorize all those things and cram it in right before the MCAT. Lastly, I would recommend that you take a cell biology course. Um, I personally found cell biology to be way too detailed for the realm of the MCAT, but I ended up liking 
that I learned it in such depth because the MCAT actually seemed a lot more simple after I took cell biology. Um, and there's a lot of pathways that overlap that are actually considered biochemistry or biology, but you learn them in a lot more depth than cell biology and having that deepened understanding helps a lot while you are taking the test. And um, just knowing how to decipher the different relationships between molecules and the pathway, and you learn all that in cell biology. And that's really helpful when you're trying to decipher all the relationships between these variables and molecules and a pathway in a biology or biochemistry passage on the test. So those are all the courses that I would recommend taking before you take the MCAT. Obviously, there's a ton of different courses you can take. You don't have to take all of the ones I recommend. Um, I would take the ones that the AAMC recommends. If you can't, though, um, I know some people self-study some of that material. Um, it's totally up to you. I know taking those upper level courses that gave me an even deeper understanding than the MCAT requires helped me um, not freak out on test day and um, to feel comfortable and confident with all of the material. Okay, now I'm going to move on into a breakdown of the different sections and all of the tips that I have for them. So first is chemistry and physics. My first tip is to use the units that you're given in calculation problems, especially for physics. So there are a ton of physics equations that you're expected to memorize. And I know this may not be a perfect tip, but my tip is to not worry about memorizing the really complicated equations. Um, usually, if you're given numbers to calculate together to get a final result, you can figure out how to calculate those numbers together to get that final result based on the units. So you can get a lot of physics problems right just by looking at what units you have in the variables that you're given to start with and the units that you need to end up with in your answer and calculating the variables together in a way that gives you the units of the answer. And that's how I would do a lot of physics problems because I had a lot of trouble memorizing the physics equations. I'm not really one to just memorize equations that I could just reference in the real world. It seems a little bit unnecessary to me, so I have trouble motivating myself to do that. Um, I'm more of a person who likes to have an understanding of material. So being able to get through those calculation questions using dimensional analysis was really helpful for me. Next, I know I said that you shouldn't memorize all of the long, complicated equations, which you totally can if you want to be safe. Um, I would recommend that you do memorize the equations. I just know that I personally didn't and I was okay. But I would at least recommend you memorize the simple equations like V equals IR, um, all of those like very simple ones. Those aren't hard to memorize and you're going to need to know those on test day for sure. Next, I'm going to talk about a tip I have for organic chemistry. Honestly, all of the very minute reactions you have to memorize for your organic chemistry 2 course, you will not really have to know for the MCAT. Now, it is a part of the content that they claim they can test, but the MCAT, I've realized, is more about testing your understanding um, of the way things work rather than just pulling stuff from your memory that you memorized. Um, so I found that when they would ask about reactions, they would often give you the reaction, or if they're asking about a specific property of a reaction or the way it works, they're gonna ask you about the bigger ones that you learned in organic one, like SN1, SN2. Lastly, and this applies to all of the sections, you'll start to realize very commonly tested subjects, like in the chemistry and physics section, they always test the Le Chatelier's principle. Make sure that you pick up on those things that are very commonly tested, because I remember on the AAMC full lengths, that principle was tested almost every time. Next is the car section. So I have a love-hate relationship with cars, and that's because the section is very up and down for me. And on my actual test day, I actually kind of got the lower end of my practice scores. My strategy going into cars was to highlight sparingly in the passages. So I would highlight keywords, or I would highlight a viewpoint or an opposing viewpoint, um, because a lot of the questions in cars are going to focus on viewpoints and the author's opinion and different people's opinions in the passage rather than small minute details because those are easy you could just find that in the passage but they ask about your understanding of the passage as a whole so i would highlight things that would help me understand the passage as a whole and i would highlight very sparingly because if you highlight everything then there's no point in the highlighter anymore i would also read the whole passage before i even took a look at the questions because i was focused on this main idea and this viewpoint of the author 
rather than focusing on the small details. And if I read a question before I read the passage, then my mind would just be focused on finding the answer to that question the whole time, rather than looking at the passage as a whole. Lastly, I would highly recommend focusing on timing with cars. Um, just hammering in that practice will help you with this. On um, the real thing, I got in late to sit down for the section and I was already a couple minutes in when I sat down and then my test ended before I had even answered a couple of the questions. So I would highly recommend that you focus on timing and um, focus on getting through those passages. You may even want to have a little bit of extra time at the end in your practice test just in case. The next section is biology and biochemistry. So this section I actually really liked because I like reading scientific papers. I'm a biology major. Um, this was honestly my jam. I was taking and I mean physiology, I had just taken cell biology, so a lot of them were applicable to what I was learning currently. So how I would do this is sometimes I would take my dry erase booklet that I had and I would write out the relationships between the variables or the molecules and the pathway that they were listing. Um, or if they gave me data, I would write a little note about what that graph showed. And um, this is really helpful in just straightening everything out in my mind because they do throw a lot of information at you at once. Lastly, one of the things that I noticed that was commonly tested on this section was the amino acids and specifically their properties and not just if they're polar, nonpolar, acidic or basic, but I would often get asked if they could be phosphorylated and I didn't even know what this meant until I started doing practice questions. These are just the little things that you pick up on as you're doing practice questions and exams. What's very commonly tested, what you need to know and everything like that. Lastly is psychology and sociology. So this section was also one of my favorites. I really liked the last two sections of MCAT. Not so much the first two, but I loved the last two. And that was reflected in my scores on test day too. For psychology and sociology, you're gonna to wanna to know all of the different terms. I know a lot of them seem like common sense, but you'll want to memorize the specific terms for things because a lot of them seem like common sense, but they're really not. And um, you'll want to know all of the names of the psychological disorders and the differences between them. I know with like schizophrenia, schizotypal, and all these different schizo disorders, um, they're, they were really hard for me to distinguish between. So I'd highly recommend that you make some flashcards or something like that for all of the different psychology and sociology terms as well as all of the psychological disorders. And also for this section, you'll want to know how to look at um, psychological or sociological research, interpret studies and graphs, and um, especially look at the validity or reliability of different studies because a lot of questions will ask about that. So next I'm going to move on to test day preparation and tips. The biggest thing that I can recommend for this is to take your practice tests in test-like conditions. For example, when I was taking practice tests the night before, I would prepare like I would for the actual test. I would pack my bag and my lunch. I would work out, make a nice dinner. I would shower and make sure everything is in place before I went to sleep. Then that morning, I would wake up when I had to for test day, which was 530. I would get ready, make sure I had everything, grab everything with me, go to my car, and because I had to drive an hour to my testing site, I would drive 30 minutes out and 30 minutes back, back to my apartment where I walked back in, I set my stuff in a little cubby that I had in my apartment, and then I would go take my practice exam in a spare bedroom that I had. I also took a trip to my testing site two weeks before my exam, and I got up when I was supposed to for my exam just to test it out and see how long it took me to get there. Um, and that was really helpful too because I got to just peek through the glass and see what I was going to be getting myself into on test day just to reduce those nerves going in. Also during my practice tests, I used the earplugs and the dry erase booklet that I had from Amazon. Um, and these were really helpful because you're gonna have earplugs or headphones on test day and you're gonna have this weird wet erase booklet type thing, which is a lot different than writing on paper, so I thought that was really helpful. Also very important, I tried not to look at my phone in between sections because on test day you're either going to have to leave your phone in your car or if you bring it in you're gonna have to seal it up in a plastic bag and put it in the back of your locker and not touch it all day. Also to eliminate stress going into test day, as you take these practice tests in very test-like conditions, I would recommend that you 
develop a list on your phone of all of the things that you want to pack and bring and do the night before and the morning of the test. For example, I wrote down all of the stuff I wanted to bring for lunch and for snacks. I wrote down all the stuff I wanted to bring in my book bag. I wrote down all the stuff I wanted to do the night before my exam and all the stuff I needed to do the morning of. So to end off the video, I just want to finish off with a couple of general tips. My first one is that practice is so much more important than content review. I personally did not get through all of the content. I decided to move on to doing fully practice um, about a month and a half before my exam because I knew that it was a lot more important. A lot of being successful in the MCAT is learning how to take the MCAT and learning from your mistakes. Um, you could know all of the stuff in the world, but if you don't know how to apply it and if you don't know how to answer the test questions the way that the test makers are thinking, then you're not going to do very well on your test. So I would highly recommend that you do all of the practice you possibly can, high quality practice as well. I only did AMC practice for the most part. I didn't do UWorld or anything because I wanted to focus on the quality of the practice I was doing. So after I would do a practice exam or a set of questions, I would go through and I would review every single question in depth and go back and look at all of the content behind that question if I needed to. My second tip is I know this is a big and scary test and it does have a lot of weight on getting into medical school in your future, but please try not to panic. This test does not define who you are and you are going to be successful no matter what the number on your test says. If you're determined and driven enough, you are going to be successful in whatever you want to do. Do not let this silly test determine your worth because you are an amazing person, you're beautiful, and you are driven and hardworking regardless of what a number on a screen says. With that being said, I'd like to end the video on that note. Um, remember that the MCAT does not define who you are. I'm very glad to have you in this community of mine that I'm building up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Please like and subscribe. Um, hit the bell if you want to get notifications when I post. You can also follow me on Instagram. My handle is at future.doctor.coral. And my email I will put up here and in the description box below. Um, leave a comment down below of any video requests you have or any questions you have for me. I am very happy to answer any questions you may have um, and also make videos on topics that you are interested in. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!